Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Soli Minimum update. Thursday, January 24th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at Mount Agung going boom in the night. It is a fright. It is quite delightful. Let's bring it back to the beginning and enjoy it from the moment it explodes. As cosmic rays, we can see nice lava there, heat the subsurface as the magnetosphere wanes and the sun shuts down, more and more volcanic events like this will be commonplace in your lifetime. And Mount Agung has been on the radar since the beginning. We'll leave you links below. This is coming from Volcano YTS. Banging footage. That's not all going off today. Take a look. We have live Fuego Cam. Fuego has been erupting for the last four hours. We're over at Volcanoverse. Only 17 people watching a live Fuego update. This mountain took the lives of hundreds of people just months ago. Sakodajima currently erupting. And we have more footage. Epic footage of Popo Catapetol. Popo for short. Going boom, boom. Big time. Obliterating all the campsites on the flank of the mountain. This is a huge, huge pyroclastic explosion of epic proportions. Dumping mass thousands of tons of molten rock at once across the entire flank of Popo. All the poor critters that were up there were vaporized. At the same time, Etna was outgassing quite nice, nicely. This is yesterday. Amazing amount of heat <laughs> coming from this, as well as stratospheric aerosols, which will cl cause cloud nucleation in this area increasing the albedo effect as we descend into the grand solar minimum sites like this three four a day will turn into 30 and 40 events similar to the one i just showed you are you prepared keep calm it's boom time extreme cold weather grips the u.s dispelling doubts about climate change is this an oxymoron well, it's certainly coming from China. This is coming from China, Washington, January 22nd. A poll released Tuesday showed more people are starting to believe climate change is credible. Partly due to the frigid weather which has gripped the United States. What? I guess they went from global warming to climate change and now climate change means cooling. No fooling. <laughs> Let's load these up. I don't have anything good. I'd never win. Volcano butt boom. That'll be nice. Boom! Bear with me. Let me center this so we can use it throughout the program. Keep calm. Extreme cold weather grips U.S. dispelling doubts about climate change. A poll released Tuesday showed more people are starting to believe climate change is credible, partly due to the frigid weather which has gripped the United States. Thanks, China, for not even understanding what climate change means, but giving us an edge to confusing the public totally. And now they have no idea what's going on and my computer is completely frozen five minutes four seconds in we did it we can always come back to the the boom no we can't we can't do anything right now bear with us while we iron out the blanket Al, are you jiggling with the wires? Boom! 
I guess he is. Polar Vortex to blast Midwestern, Northeastern U.S. with extreme cold to end January thanks to climate change. The colder air plunging back into the Midwestern and Northeastern United States later this week will pale in comparison to the brutal cold expected to end January. This is what we reported on 24 hours ago, and now the mainstream is all over it. They must use our channel as a primer. From this Thursday night through late next week, it will be a very cold stretch and high energy draw from the plains to the east coast. According to AccuWeather lead long range meteorologist Paul Pastelock. While the current blast of Arctic air is expected to hold highs in the single digits and teens across the upper Midwest on Friday and Saturday, even harsher conditions could put more people and animals at risk of frostbite, hypothermia, and infrastructure failing. Are you prepared? I'm about to drink some avocado juice. I'm getting my immune system prepared. Ah, oh, there's a little kale in there. That's delicious. Cucumber, apple, romaine. Cold pressed. Come get it. Oh, my goodness. We're frozen up. It is a paltry nine degrees outside. And it's definitely because there's multiple things playing. We have tons of videos up and I wish I could show them, but instead I'm gonna shut them down. So if you could just bear with me here, 730. A magnitude 3.2 to earthquake occurred. Bay of Plenty, 191.72 kilometers deep, seven minutes ago by GeoNet Status M. Not working out. It's not working out tonight, folks. My bad. We're back. Fresh, bitter cold to set stage for early week snowstorm in Midwestern U.S. It's going to be cold and we're going to cover it. Deep freeze gripping the Midwestern United States will set the stage for several opportunities for snow. More of those snow opportunities, the most significant of which may come Sunday into Monday and impact the major cities from Minneapolis, Chicago, and Detroit. And we'll check the models shortly. Bands of snow expected across Metro Detroit tonight. Coldest air of the season coming next week. Bands of snow will increase across Metro Detroit this evening. It's going to be a chilly one, creating dangerous travel. The heaviest snow is expected to fall between 5 p.m. and 1 a.m. Temperatures aren't looking good. Grand Rapids minus 7, minus 8 in Lansing. Minus 5 in Bad Axe, minus 2 Port Huron. Cold water, minus seven. These occasionally intense lake effect snow bands will vary in intensity and wander north and south across Metro Detroit into Friday. Heads up, Detroit! We're doing our best here, guys. This is the 49th attempt. An eighth splice. Dangerous cold to blast through Chi-Town this week, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. Looks frozen there. Whew. Windy in that city. The National Weather Service is warning that the real Midwest winter is on the way for Chicago area, with snow flurries expected Thursday before temperatures plummet by Sunday, which will not be your fun day. Severe winter weather will be hitting Chi-Town over the next week, bringing dangerous cold with below zero temperatures before the wind chill. According to National Weather Service, Arctic cold front is expected to hit the air Thursday with an under, another following next week, dropping the wind chill as low as 30 below zero. We're no queero. Those are facts. The Chicagoland area may break records for cold temperatures ever in January. It's too early to predict the exact numbers, however, according to the Weather Service. And people are believing in global warming now because these temperatures are just so low. 
The first wave of the dangerous cold is expected Thursday night into Friday morning, according to meteorologist Gino Izzy. Is he right or is he wrong? The first significant shot of Arctic air this season will arrive this afternoon. Expect gusty west winds tonight, which will produce wind chills of minus 20 to minus 30 in Chi-Town. There is a chance for a quick round of light snow Friday, but at these temperatures, that snow is almost impossible. We have seen some of the coldest snow on Earth happening recently up in Canada. Dangerous wind, t wind chills in Chi-Town. Heads up. You're frozen. Infrastructure will begin to fail. Snow's in the forecast next week. This is down in the deep south. Huntsville, Alabama. Memphis. South down into Louisiana. Heavy snows up in the Appalachians through West Virginia. All the way up. Heavy lake effect snow as well. How to prevent pipes from freezing during extreme cold? Move south. <clears throat> or bury them deep, insulate. And if you're in an area that doesn't typically get cold and you're now cold because of the onset of the grand solar minimum, our waning magnetosphere, and uh, the public now believing in climate change because of these temperatures, you could simply let your water trickle, dripping out of the faucet. By allowing this to flow through there, it acts as a heater. Heating your pipes by flowing water. Springfield, Massachusetts with wind chill warnings and advisories in place until Tuesday for dangerous cold and wind chill temperatures. Homeowners are facing risk of frozen pipes. If you want to know more about pipe facts, check out the link below. Free from Santa. That's a ho, ho, ho. We're about to get to the icon model, which is showing light to moderate snow throughout the U.S. And the next 24 hours, we'll just pause it. Light snow through most of uh, eastern Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, a little bit moving into uh, Ohio at this point. Most of Ohio will get covered. Western Pennsylvania through the weekend. So there's your weekend impacts. Most of West Virginia picking up some snow. Heaviest snows in northern Colorado. And the border between Wyoming and Idaho. And then we have that Alberta clipper moving in, bringing heavy snow to the Minnesota-Iowa border. Heads up Wisconsin, Michigan. You're going to get hit. Huge lake effect in New York State, which will be great. Heavy snow and snowshoe, and then a second southern storm dipping all the way to Florida. Some models are showing the panhandle here getting covered in global warming goodness and the white rain returning to Florida. But this current icon model showing 14 to 16 inches of snow throughout the southern Appalachians and a huge swath through central Kentucky. And I'm not being plucky. I'm showing you the model. Let's come check out the GFS and see where they're at. There was only a few hours uh, in their new model currently uploaded, but we're at, at 210, so we'll let that go, and we'll be right back to it. Extreme cold prompts, first alert day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This is for you, Iowa. We warned you. A first alert day is in effect through noon Saturday for dangerously cold temperatures and wind chills. An Arctic front will be followed by strong northwest winds. We will bottom out in the teens below zero by Friday morning with wind chills near minus 30. The bitter cold wind chills will stick around till Saturday morning with temps this cold frostbite can set in in 30 minutes. And then the global warming goodness starts to bury the state. It'll be great. Al Gore will be in his hole. And unfortunately, extreme cold likely to cause water main breaks. And that's a boom! Volcano butt boom. After enjoying one of the most forgiving winters in decades, Kenosha water utility generator Ed St. Peter said he's we're totally fluxed. 
It's going to be minus 30 for over a week. And we've raised all the water mains up higher because of global warming. And they're about to go boom. Make sure you have plenty of water on hand in your house if you're in any, any of these frigid areas. Fill all the containers you have. Go out and buy some cases of bottled water. Whatever you need to do because if you lose that pressure, you can no longer wash or sanitize. You can always poop in a bucket and tie the bag shut. Here's the GFS model. And that's showing very similar patterns. A little band of southern snow, but a heavy blanket of snow. Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Heads up. Even Georgia picking up on the party. But a pretty significant event all the way down through the southern Appalachians, through Tennessee, West Virginia. The mountains of North Kakalaki. Heads up. Heavy snow in northern New York. Lake Placid. Great off the Great Lakes. All up in the DAX. Buried. Most of New Hampshire. Dumped on. Northern Vermont. Northern New Hampshire, especially here, picking up 24 inches maybe. Northern Maine, it's insane. And look at these totals up here in Eastern Canada. It's crazy. Now the computer's working, but we don't have any of the good volcano footage. I apologize. Cold temperatures likely to curve our central and eastern U.S., just like we said, into next week. Right now there's 11 states under wicked cold warning. That's the baby blue. And if you're in these gray areas, you're going to freeze your arse off. And there's no 911 telephone, according to this false statement. There's the cold zone. It's coming for you. A cold air mass will settle over the central and eastern U.S. through this weekend. A strong cold front and Arctic air mass is expected to invade the same areas next week, producing even colder, below normal temperatures, bitter cold wind chills, broken infrastructure, and lots of people freezing to death. No major storm systems are anticipated because if they came, it would be the blizzard of the century. Extreme cold returns to Saskatchewan and he's smiling and profiling. It felt like Mother Nature tossed parts of Saskatchewan into the deep freezer Thursday morning. Environment Canada had extreme cold warnings in place for much of the province, including Regina and Saskatoon. Temperatures expected below minus 30 C during the morning, with wind chills to minus 40 C. Look at his glee. His eyes must be frozen open. Bus cancellations this morning with extreme cold warnings. This morning across west central Saskatchewan, an extreme cold warning has been issued. According to Environment Canada, extreme cold warnings are issued when it is fucking cold out. Temperatures reaching close to minus 40 this morning with wind chill. They canceled bus service, thankfully. <laughs> because you would freeze to death in less than 30 minutes. Oh, it's a northern life. Minus 11.8C. It's gorgeous out in Sudbury.com. Wednesday brings a break from the extreme cold. Warming up to minus 13. That's amazing. Good job. Seismic update. <laughs> 4.9 Papua New Guinea at 206 kilometers. We watching this area. This is sitting underneath the 5.3 that happened in the same region. So these are unrelated and there could be larger activity in this zone in the next 24 hours. We do have the space weather and it is, we are now connected sun to earth as the sun is beaming its electricity into our plasma sphere. We'll get to it and we'll also be looking at sunspots and some activity kicking up on the sun as soon as it loads. <laughs> No other quakes of note, except we have activity in the New Madrid and Appalachia zone, 2.5, 17 kilometers north of 
Chopping South Kakalaki. Moderate uptick in the Ring of Fire. And a 5.3 in Greece. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego, Chivalouche, Reventador, Manam, San Cristobal. 14,000 foot eruption at Chivalouche, followed by 8,000 foot emission at San Cristobal. We also have Popo, Ducono, and Planchon Peteroa, Saco, Fuego, which is now erupting currently live. And here's the uptick, and we just had to kill the footage, unfortunately. But I implore you to go over to Volcanoverse to look at Fuego uptick erupting live now. An eruption at Manam Volcano sent ash into the air for nearby communities in Papua New Guinea Wednesday, January 23rd during the boom boom cooling the earth. The eruption occurred before 4 p.m. local time sending lava down the side of the cliffs and spewing ash into the air. Look at this tree. It looks fake. Either that or it's an antenna. What do you guys think? According to the U.S. Geological Survey, an earthquake was observed just northeast of the volcano approximately two hours before the start of the eruption. Communication on the island was cut Wednesday night when the only Digicel Tower was toppled by volcanic activity. Can you say kick back to the Stone Age? While authorities are issuing ash plume warnings for aviation purposes, ash fall will be generally limited outside of thunderstorms, according to AccuWeather. Thunderstorms could initially blow ash out of the area, but also provide an opportunity for ash to get pushed back in your face. Look at the power of that. Boom. Holy macaroni. <coughs> EMP shield facts. EMP shield claims to be four times stronger than military grade EMP and solar flare protection for 350 bucks. And EMP shield received all accreditation from the Department of Defense testing lab. Well, we got NASA to look at it. And many other people have already looked at this product. And it does not protect against E1 and E3 pulses. In fact, the accreditation they have only checked E2. And the unit itself could never withstand E1 or E3. Which means it is not protecting you from EMP ever. It's barely a lightning arrester. Barely. EMP shield has approximately one-fourth of the protection of a good lightning arrestor at four times the price, with ten times the claims. Because of manipulated marketing methods, selective testing, concealed pack packaging methods, they can charge you a lot of money for a product that does something, but it does not protect from EMP at all. I'm going to link you to a video from Disaster Prepper. Subscribe to the channel, just like I just did. Give them a thumbs up. Surge protection device comparison. You can get your feet wet on surge protectors, and this guy is developing a real EMP surge protector. And it will be better than any of the lightning arresters or any of the so-called EMP surge protectors on the market. He's good friends with Greens Greg. Greg Allison from NASA, who's going to be at LeeCon. And... If you want to know more information on the development of his product, we'll probably have that info in May at LeeCon. But come check out the video. It's a awesome. Of surge protection devices and opened them up and took a good look at the technology that was being used in them. And what was not surprising was the designs were all fairly simple uh, and all fairly similar, in fact. Um, but what was surprising was the quality differences between the devices. Some of the products were well. He's specifically referring to EMP Shield as being a cheap piece of crap. Sorry to say it, but those are the facts. Check out the video if you want more information. One serving of fried chicken a day linked to 13% higher risk of death. Study finds. Who is eating one serving of fried chicken a day? Are, are, are people doing that? Are you kidding me? They need a study because people are eating fried chicken every day of their life. 
and there's enough people that eat fried chicken every single day of their life that they had enough people to do a study? Hey, if you didn't know, eating fried chicken every single day of your life is probably a bad idea. First of all, because you fry all the nutrition out of the chicken. And that's disgusting. So 13% of you deserve to desire, die faster. <laughs> Ew! Volcanoes fed by mush reservoirs rather than molten magma. A lot of you are asking why I keep saying magma chamber because it's in the literature and I have to say it. But these chambers are not molten. And what they're recording is, well, read the paper. Learn something. Don't ask me for all the answers. You need to learn so that you can come up with your own conclusions. I can only lead you in that direction. Explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. Volcano as a bubble chamber. We watched it earlier and then we had to shut it down. <laughs> But if you want to read the paper, do it. Record setting ice hole drilled in Antarctica. Using a hot water drill, British scientists have dug a 7,060 foot borehole through the Antarctic ice sheet. And then this next sentence blows my mind. The comically long ice hole. Yeah, that's hilarious. It's, that's so funny. I can't stop laughing. That's hilarious. Major flare in the sea range coming off of the sun. As we're doing the video, this is the biggest flare in over a year. And we need to go look at it because it's happening live before your very lives. Coming out of sunspot 2733 AR 12733 which is now beta DRO but as we were doing the video I saw some blue mixing in with that red and it's now past earth facing so it's turning around the other limb so we're going to refresh this information and we're going to break it down live check out this flare okay it's a high B range not getting into C <clears throat> this is simultaneously happening while there is a spike in the plasma density and the plasma wind speed here, which has brought us up into KP5 as we predicted yesterday, but it took 24 hours to get there. We were suggesting it would hit here, but in fact it rolled back down and came back up, which means there's excellent aurora potential right now in Canada, and there is surface charging in our satellite environment. But more importantly, we just had one of the biggest flares in a while, which is not big at all. But it is exciting for us science geeks. So we're going to be watching this spot closely as it increases in intensity. Still only 10% of uh, sea flare potential here. And we're going to be watching 2733 as we go. So we do have a major B coming off. First solar proton flux like this in a while. It's just kind of nice to see the sun getting some activity. And we have been in geomagnetic storm in the last six hours at KP5, which is G1 storm. Asteroid impacts increased around the time of the largest extinction event. And this is 65 million years ago, the KT boundary, Cretaceous tertiary boundary, extinction of the dinosaurs. Boom, boom, boom. Yucatan Peninsula much. It's our belief that this was has to do with, well, we'll get that in a different video. If you want to know more about asteroid impacts increasing 65 million years ago, come check out the link below. That's all I can tell you. It's been a rough night. Volcanoes, they's exploding. Volcano butt boom, it's a natural. VCon 2019, tickets are selling fast. You have six and a half days to get 20% boom discount. Do it now. We would love to see you there. Keep calm, it's boom time. Be safe, we love you.
That's a boom.